Welcome everyone to my first ever video blog. I hope you will enjoy the questions and my answers. Melody G writes, I would like to know how you came to choose Abby's type. She isn't a lot of people's heroine image. Often main characters are almost perfect and Abby isn't. She falls into a normal human category, looks, height, and job. The fact she flunked out of law school adds a dimension often missing in heroines. She is more human and like the everyday woman. Melody, you hit the nail on the head. This is exactly what I was hoping to do when I created Abby Knight. I wanted her to be every woman. When I read a book, I can identify with characters that strike a chord in me. And I wanted Abby to strike a chord in everybody who picked up that book. And I think having those flaws, having freckles, having to deal with a short stature, having to be too busty to fit in clothes, all gives uh, Abby a dimension of reality. So, good question, Melody. Thanks for that. The next question is from Valerie P., who wants to know, when brainstorming an initial story concept, do you start with the ending, then work your way backwards through the details and storyline, or vice versa? Neither, actually. <laughs> I have to come up with a murder. And to do that, um, I have to know how Abby will be involved in it if it is a friend, if it's a family member who's uh, tied in with it. Um, some, there has to be a connection to Abby, otherwise she doesn't need to get involved. Once I have a murder in mind, then I have to come up with the victim. And I always make it somebody who is despicable to me because I don't want to carry, kill off a, a kind character and I will never ever ever kill off a child or an animal in my books. I can't do it. And I don't read books like that either. Um, after I have decided on the victim, I come up with four suspects who have reason to want that person dead. So to do that, I have to know the person's backstory, which means I have to create a backstory for that person. That person has to have a history. So I set up a character sketch and how other people interact in that victim's life. Once I have that in mind, I have to come up with my opening scene. So it's actually kind of working in the middle and then going to the beginning. And uh, the, the opening scene has to be dramatic. It has to tie in Abby. And then I create the closing scene. Once I know that, then I can go back to the beginning and write the story. Great question, Valerie. Thanks. Okay, the next question is from Suzanne Frank. I love a good cozy mystery, and as much as the synopsis helps sell it, I've always picked it up first in art because of the cover art. Do you have a say in it? Make suggestions? Doodle little pictures? I doodle, but they never go to my editor. <laughs> Actually, um, if my editor is not terribly busy, she will let me know there's going to be a cover conference where she will sit down with the art department and discuss what they need to have on the cover. If she's busy and forgets to tell me, then they will have their cover conference and it'll be based on the synopsis that I submit. Uh, they will pick out certain big details out of that. Um, then I see a mock-up of the cover and um, often they will ask my advice on the clothing. Sometimes they get it terribly wrong. Uh, the le in the cover they're working on right now for A Rude Awakening, we have adjusted the clothes on the cover three times. But sometimes there are oops moments that I don't catch and my editor doesn't catch. In Throw in the Trowel, the little dog on the cover should only have three legs. 
but we were focused on other things on the cover. For instance, the way they had Abby's body. At first it looked like her head was a balloon that was tied to her body. And so we were so worried about fixing up her and the details around her that we totally missed the dog's fourth leg. So unfortunately it got through with four legs and as you know CD only has three. So I had to go back into the story and write a scene where Abby is walking CD's puppy seedling. So that explains that oops moment. Good question. And I would like to take just a minute for you to look right over here at my little friend who is behind me here, right behind my Christmas cactus. This is my son's cat, Ramses, who's staying with me for a few days. And he looks pretty bored back there, so I hope you had a good time watching my vlog, my first ever vlog. And thanks for tuning in.